Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. Well, I've been promising you to do some real quick uh, videos helping us to remember some of our back studies and everything. And I want to show you, especially those of you that are new people that have never painted with acrylics, show you some fantastic ways. We'll do it in a couple of real small videos here on how to blend with acrylics, how to get different looks, and what we call the and understanding what we call as chemists, which is what I was for a long time the rheology of the paint, okay? And making some of these techniques quite a bit e uh, easier. The first thing, this is the colors that I use. And I use a, a paint that I developed. This, I was the chemist behind this. And this is the Heritage Multimedia. Now, all acrylics are not the same. And let me just get that out right away, okay? I've made acrylics for different paint companies that dry really fast. I've made some that dry really slow. You have different types of additives to the acrylics that will make some dry really hard, that will make some dry uh, soft, that will have different cure times. That's how long it takes for them to become hard. And so we got to remember that. And so not all acrylics are the same. I make a chemical here with this one, extender medium. And extender medium does not work with all acrylics. So you just have to test, or if you don't know, Write the paint company of the company of the brand that you use, and uh, they'll be able to tell you. Now, I was teaching a class the other day. Let's just come up here to a board, and let me show you the difference. Now, see, this is a surface that I prepped with a little bit of color and uh, a, a uh, product that we make called a Curlish Cam uh, Canvas Prep Medium. And you know, there's a lot of things you can use, like gessos or sealers. I'll show you all the difference between uh, those products. But this is acrylic canvas prep medium. Now, what makes it different? We made it uh, for canvas, but everyone likes it on wood, and I like it on wood as well. And what it does is it leaves a tooth, what we call a tooth to the paint. So if I take my brush, let me just take a three-quarter inch brush here. And if I take my brush, a three-quarter inch brush, you will feel it grabbing over the surface. Okay, it is not a slick surface, okay? That makes a difference. So in a lot of paintings I show, you'll see me do a lot, I'll, I'll do all different kinds of backgrounds and background manipulation onto it. And I determine right from the very beginning, do I want that surface, the, how do I want the paint to feel on that surface? Let me show you. This is just the paint uh, squirted right out. And let me just take some, uh, let's just make a light blue, okay? So I'll take a little blue, and I'll take a little white. Let's just pretend we're gonna put a sky on here, okay? So I'll take a little blue, take a little white, and I'll use this uh, right here. Matter of fact, let's do it this way so you can see immediately the reaction. So I'll have my blue, and then on the surface that has here, this is right here, this is what we call, a, a, the surface is matte. It is, I put on the canvas prep medium. I sanded it lightly with 180 grit sandpaper. You can hear it, the surface, it's not slick. That's why I don't use a lot of gessos, they're too slick. Now, right back here, so I'll leave it normal here. And then what I'm gonna do is change the rheology of the surface. I am going to take some, some of my, um, the extender medium here. I'll put it in a brush. And what I'm gonna do is remove the matte surface of the paint. See, a matte surface wants to grab moisture out of your acrylics. And so what I'll do is I'll just come right here and I'll just pull some of this. Now you can see it, can you see it change color? That's it soaking down into the surface of the paint. That's what a mat. When you leave your board mat, in other words, it's not sealed, it's mat, it will absorb some of the, the extender medium into it. Now, why does it do that? And what's the advantage of that? If you absorb into this, that surface some of the extender medium, your acrylics are not gonna dry as fast because that extender is gonna slow them down, okay? It's also gonna give you a different rheology to the paint or feeling of the paint across the surface. So let's take my brush right here with the blue, right? And if I come up here on the top where there is none and I drag this across, you can see I get this. This is what is called the granulated stroke, heavy in the paint and then it granulates out. It gets all of this, we call it granulating out. But if I come down to here and I pull it across, 
I can get a smooth color all the way across instantaneously with it. Now, why does that happen? Up here, the surface is pulling the paint off of the, out of the, uh, or pulling the moisture out of the brush. Whereas down below, I filled up that surface with some moisture and it won't do it. Let's do it with a different color here so you can see it even better. So I'll take, I'll come right down below this and fill this up a little bit more, okay? Then I'll come right up here. Let's just grab some burnt sienna. This color will show up really nice, maybe even a little bit of blue in it. So a nice dark color, okay? So if I come right up here and I pull this across, do you see it immediately drags? Do you see that? And this is what I like. This is what I like right here with a lot of florals. But if I come down here and pull this, see how it slides across the entire surface. And I can come back a couple times and slide this really nice across the surface. So you get two completely different looks. And this is one reason why when I show you guys in, in a lot of the videos that I do, you see me a lot of times paint on matte surfaces. Most of the videos, I say 90% of the videos that I do here on the channel, I do on a matte surface. Because the matte surface, I can control how my paint goes on. I can just feel it, you know, if I want to make something really smooth, on the, say I'm going to, you know, do some faux finish or something like that, or some background manipulation. I can fill it up with some extender and come in here, just take, I can use all kinds of stuff and the colors will slide and stay smooth all over the surface really easy. Okay. But if I take that and I use any, any kind of stuff and I go up here, the colors are going to look completely different. See the difference between the two here, because the matte surface grabs the paint right away where the slick surface doesn't grab it anymore because I filled it up with other stuff and it'll go in smooth and I can blend something out to it's a nice wash or something like that. We're here. That's very hard to do because that surface is grabbing all of the moisture. So how you prep your surface is very important. And I get a lot of questions from people. Well, can I paint on cardboard? Uh, no. Cardboard is way more absorptive than that is. It will be a nightmare for you because the acrylics will not move. The rheology of the paint, will the moisture will be pulled out of the paint immediately, okay? But if you have to do something, let's say I want to do something and I want to um, move this paint here a little bit more. Can I? Yes. You feed the paint more moisture. Does that make sense? What is going out of the paint when I'm going across the matte surface? Moisture. So I could feed it water, which water will dry up pretty quickly. Or I can put extender into this paint here, okay? Just put it in, right into it, mix it up. Now you have more moisture into the color and it will pull across the surface much easier and you won't get that dragging to the surface, okay? But if I want to get the dragging, then I just come over here, I dry the paint out. Where are the paint? Let's just grab some of this. Doesn't have as much moisture in it. It's more just the paint right out of the right out of the tube, straight out of the tube. The paint right out of the tube is very dry. And if I come down here and if I try to drag over it, I'm gonna get this. This is the granulated stroke. I won't be able to smoothly do it like I do back down here, any place that I have moisture. And so if I put something on and I notice I get this and I wanna smooth it, don't always go grab more point paint. Sometimes just grab more moisture, add more moisture to it, so that the paint moves and then you can go back and forth and back and forth and it'll work really nice. And if I want it even smoother, a lot of times you'll see I'll take a paper towel, add a little moisture right to my paper towel and I can, I can blend in or move that edge. What is it that causes paint to move? I, this is what I tell my students all the time. I ask them this question. What is it that cost pa causes paint to move? It's its vehicle. It's water or it's moisture. That's what causes it. Dry paint doesn't move, see? And so if I want more of a, I feel the paint on my surface here. 
And if I want it to drag more, I dry the paint out, okay? So I know this paint here ha doesn't have a lot of moisture in it. And when I go to use this on a surface, it's going to granulate. See, it's going to granulate just like that. You can see that or barely see that because I'm barely on the surface. But if I come here where I have moisture, it's going to go on really nice. So you get two completely different looks. And this is still all real wet, so it'll go on real smooth. Do you see that? I come down here, it'll go on real dry, it'll go on real granulated. So you get two different looks. And so when I'm developing backgrounds, when I'm developing, if I'm decided I'm going to wash a sky on, what do you need if you're going to wash on a sky? You need a lot of moisture so that the paint doesn't grab. If you're painting a cloud and you want it to get these little wispy edges, then you may want to granulate your paint so you remove the moisture out of the paint. You will not get that if you go on here and, and want to put on a smooth cloud and then you want to, uh, I mean, you want to put on smooth sky, then you want to have a granulated cloud, which I do all the time, I would have to let that dry up just a little bit, and that would help. So moisture, okay, and you have water. Water is great. I use water here, you know, all the time in my paints. Water's great, but water's thin and water's, water dries really fast. This extender that I have here, you can see, is still all wet. And so it's going to stay wet for a long time, this moisture here, and give me the chance to manipulate this all out here, like this. But anything that's dry is already dry. You see that? It's already dry. It can't do that. So moisture is your friend. Moisture, and this is why I start with a matte surface. If I go in there and make that surface slick and add sealers to it or add like a gesso that has a lot of, and that's why I don't use gessos, they have a lot of vinyl in it. This product that we have here, Camera Spread, has no vinyl in it. So it doesn't make a slick surface, it makes a matte surface. So if I make any kind of surface that's slick, that your hand sl slides across really easy, I don't like that. Because I can make it slick just by putting in some extender, but yet I can also do this if I want to, okay? All right, so the surface is very important for you guys. Keep that in mind as you are, you know, you're painting through some of this stuff. If you're working through or working an edge and, you know, whenever I do a landscape or something like that, if I'm working in, you know, water or back into sky and everything, I'm constantly feeling my surface to see if I'm right now I'm all matte. And as soon as I varnish this thing, this thing will come to life. See, this is what it'll look like when it's varnished. It has no varnish on it. You can see the colors start to come to life. But see, this is matte. And uh, I like matte because I can always, you know, if I want to come in here and manipulate something, I can come in here and just give a light coat of extender over the surface here. And I can come in and glaze on or work on new shadows or something. Say I want to smooth out and put some shadows in there. I can just take that, which is, a, with a, you know, I already have that. And I can come in here and, and very easily glaze on more shadows onto my surface here. Because I've filled up the matte qualities of the surface and I can come in here and manipulate and work it and, and increase. That doesn't look too bad, does it? <laughs> but I can come in here and manipulate this. I'm just going to leave a little bit of that on there. And I can manipulate and increase my shadow or something like that. Or if I want to work a highlight or something like that. Or if I want to rework the water in some areas, I can do that. But or, or increase a shadow, maybe we want to put a little more shadow, but by increasing the, the moisture on the surface, I can do it really easy because my brush slides over the surface. Does that make sense? That's what we do. So an artist always feels the surface, especially with an acrylic, because an acrylic is water sensitive and water will pull right out of it, okay? All right, so try that. Now, I'm going to film a few more of these things. I'm going to show you how to do all different kinds of real quick blending techniques with acrylics like this. We'll paint a little rock. We'll paint a little rose. We'll put those videos up here uh, too right away so you guys can start watching those, okay? Just put that in your mind. I'll show you some fun, quick ways to blend with acrylics. All right, let's keep going.